once you've got that, the idea of having an organization that they would represent them, the only problem is sometimes the word union scares white people. And we call it something else, the Federation of Teachers. And well, that's, a, that's in our title, Federation. Right. But to some way I get along so they don't look at it as a union, but an organization of teachers so that they communicate and make sure the teachers don't have to be a member to get a vote in to say, you know, who's representing us, you know. It's hard to say, it's just the word union scares a lot of people. I'd like to have an organization of all those where the teachers are not a member of, but they vote on who's going to represent them, who's going to go to the board and discuss their things. So the things. process does not bother you? No, I just the process is good. Okay. <coughs> union is probably going to scare teachers. And is, is election okay? Well, I'm not sure I'm qualified to, to answer that question. I think there are some legal ramifications that I'm not fully aware of. Uh, I am in favor of good communication between uh, teachers and, and the Board of Trustees, which is why I would have a, an open door policy. Uh, I think that one of the duties of a, of a trustee is to listen to concerns from the community and also from the teachers and the employees and to treat those concerns confidentially. Uh, that's something I think I can do and something that uh, if our teachers aren't happy, I need to hear about that, I need to understand that because that figures into the evaluation process that we go through with the superintendent. At the end of the day, we have to work together to achieve our educational mission. So, uh, I, other than that, uh, I, I can't comment. If y'all are familiar with the Houston Police Department's history um, in the last 15 years, um, or even the last 10, um, I've never been a big, I agree with Mr. Allenbaugh, you mentioned union, it, it's, it startles people because I think sometimes um, it, can, it can damage, sometimes it can damage. Um, ideally, if there was enough communication and um, if, if the governing body the bosses, if they're receptive and they have that open line of communication, you wouldn't need an employee organization. But let's be real, it's not always that way. Um, as a lot of people, I, I wrote an op-ed, which I think was, the tone was misunderstood. Uh, what caused me to run was one particular meeting, uh, board meeting, where it became a little contentious. There were some, <coughs> some passionate speakers I believe one was escorted out by the police, um, but it was a rather contentious, but I, I noticed that when the speaker came up there, the, the board member that was addressing the speaker already knew. Now, I was kind of new at this. I didn't realize this was a, rather, a regular critic of the board, but that speaker up there, and I, I've learned now the behind the scenes part of it, that speaker, um, or I'm sorry, the person on the board that was addressing the speaker, he already knew that it was going to be negative. So he clearly had, in my opinion, a disrespectful attitude. Well, that speaker was fine until the person on the board treated him disrespectfully. Well, that caused him to go off. Uh, before sending that article in, and a lot of people don't realize this because out of respect, well, I left part of, um, before I sent that article to the Fort Bend Star, I called that board member and I let him know what I was about to do. And I said, you know, I was writing this article and I thought, you know, just to be fair, let me call you and get your side of it. Well, apparently he assumed I was affiliated, I'm thinking that I must have been affiliated with that person that, got, that he got into it with um, because he had an attitude. That article never would have been published if that board member would have treated me with respect and would have just listened to me. I specifically asked him about being receptive. That I told him, I said, I have some concerns about the way that a couple of the speakers were treated that evening. That board member, and this is a verbatim quote, he said, Mr. Bath, he said, let me try to put it in perspective for you. By law, we don't have to listen to any citizen or any employee. You should consider this forum as a favor, as us doing you a favor. Right now, we, we currently give you three minutes. We can cut that down to 30 seconds or we can eliminate it completely. I know now that the other board members did not 
have that attitude and they don't agree with that. By law, from what I understand, he's correct. They don't have to listen to anyone. But come on, that's not what the spirit of the law is about. If you have people up there that are willing to listen, then you're not going to have people. The unknown scares people. People you have, and I'm not one of the conspiracy theorists, and I've, on my website I state right up front, I don't think anything nefarious is going on behind closed doors. I respect every one of these board members. Um, I disagree with this particular one and his philosophy on dealing with the public, but I believe we need to have a board that is receptive to employ feedback and input and receptive to the community. Um, had I been treated differently, that op-ed never would have been written. I actually, in, in essence, that board member told me to write that, um, to send that in. Um, had he listened to me, the reason I wrote it is because no one would listen. 